Hi all. I like to show you another fascinating game of Paul Morphy. This is played in Alabama 1855. E4 from Paul Morphy. He has all his pieces intact for this game, by the way. <laughs> so E5, Knight F3, Knight C6. And we have Bishop C4, Bishop C5. And the classic Evans Gambit, B4. A very dangerous gambit. Bishop takes B4, C3. Bishop goes to a5, d4, d6, quite trodden territory so far, queen b3. Usually, black's move in live book with 127 games is queen d7 here, rather than queen e7. You might think there's little difference, but actually there seems to be statistically a lot of difference here. So queen d7 is the main move, for example, this is thought to be an equal position after d takes. And now, for example, bishop b6 is more popular than d takes. And uh, say knight bd2, black might even be better now after knight a5, forking that queen and bishop, which were an unfortunate position here. Well, it's, or at least equal anyway. So basically, uh, queen d7 is, is far more preferred than what is played in this game. One small step away, but a big difference. Now, the reason, one reason, is demonstrated here, d5. It's this diagonal. It's, it's a checking diagonal with the queen on e7 as opposed to d7. But we see a resourceful move from black, knight d4, trying to celebrate the queen on this e-file. On knight d8, then we can clearly see queen a4 check winning the loose bishop on a5 using that checking diagonal. So black's idea perhaps to use this e file. We have check. Another variation, if knight takes this position, you might think is very tempting to win the bishop. Actually, black has a certain counterplay here in this position after queen takes e4 and d3. Yes, first thing, a quick one two checkmate. Bishop g5, say, which is check. That's the crucial thing. <laughs> Otherwise, there is the checkmate. f6, bishop e3 preventing queen e2. And black here is better, actually. That would fully justify the queen e7 kind of novelty, actually. Uh, but there's an improvement here. On knight d4, in this line, well, more Paul Morphy played bishop b5 check. So it it does make queen e7 quite interesting to actually examine here. Is you know what technically is going on in this position? The te the technical evaluation is that it's close to equal actually. Uh, so you know this this looks like a natural move you'd play to queen e7, but knight d4, yeah, it's it's very very interesting actually. It makes you see queen e7 is quite an obscure move in live book. Uh, so with in conjunction with this, it's interesting. Check Paul Morphy's uh, attempt at refutation is the check, and knight takes d4. We have e takes, d takes, and the queen does crash through on the e file. King d1. But here, there's a big scope for improvement. Black played an overly forcing move, perhaps, bishop g4 check. I mean, it all comes down to concrete analysis anyway. But it seems black could actually have stood better, technically, with king f8, remarkably. Because uh, you might think, well, the e file is quite good for rook e1 to gain a tempo on the queen. Uh, but uh, what, what is going on this in this position? Uh, the variation I've checked is f3 queen g6 here yeah, 97 and blacks fine blacks blacks doing well you might think well hold on a sec what about the immediate rookie one isn't this really dangerous because look at this position we have some potential coordination if this bishop's unleashed there's queen takes g2 here and say we we go with a, like this just taking that helps e8 yeah, if c7, then we can throw in the check. Yeah, it's it's very very dangerous. It seems, 
but bishop g4 check is is leaving white potentially with a theoretical advantage now of to f3 black took uh, again this this uh yeah this this is leading to an advantage for white now after king c2 we have check now the best move here it seems is bishop d3 with, with an advantage for white just giving up that rook there for example taking taking there it's very complicated check but it seems white's you know got a, a big advantage here a clear advantage white's better there but in the game paul morphy plays king b2 and another fascinating point of this game where black might have actually had a better position technically is if he just takes here on c6 I'll give you an example rook d1 knight e7 bishop d3 queen e5 and black's fine yeah so b takes c6 another one bishop c4 check and now d takes c3 is quite punishing this position knight e7 very razor sharp stuff but black can get away with this it seems with an advantage technically big advantage here yeah. the size of advantage so very very complicated scenarios here but it seems king b2 might actually be an inaccuracy we have bishop um yeah so bishop d3 might have been the better move but black blunders it seems you know relatively blunders with bishop takes c3 check here and now the tide of resources to the kings is going towards blacks king because there's now a threat of rookie one here black castles queen side but it doesn't seem that safe here two spectator pieces this b file looks dangerous tempo gain here c takes b7 uh now uh the king didn't sidestep here he actually bravely took this pawn which you know would lead to exposure it seems in theory if he sidesteps with king b8 let's check this position it's a very complicated game uh bishop a6 is a move here threatening queen c8 check and if knight e7 we can take that off threatening queen c7 so what is black playing in this position knight f6 more sensible bishop f4 and we're threatening like rook a c1 and queen c8 it's it's dangerous uh if not absolutely winning a forced mate here in fact this position yeah with that pawn it's too dangerous because because it supports the queen c8 stuff uh so maybe it was a good idea you know relatively speaking to sort of well clear the pawn out but it's still very dangerous after rook b1 now threatening king a1 with the king tucked in the corner but black's king getting uh murdered on queen takes b5 clearly the queen's like pinned uh that's uh yeah just king a1 the queen's pinned the two rooks here getting two rooks it's not great you know white's got a material advantage here anyway massive material advantage so um okay so we have knight f6 now quite a nice forcing move in the circumstance here is played let's check this one let's see uh well there are various ways of, of skinning the cat here rookie seven check is, is strong as well or king a1 this this looks a little bit flashy but it does the job giving up the bishop check check the black king is too exposed uh it goes here to c8 if it goes to d7 queen takes a7 check now here uh, we can just simply win the queen actually that's simple and strong so basically uh yeah it's not good for black queen takes a7 threatening rook b8 checkmate in one that's parried now bishop d2 threatens just to pin the queen and black is helpless here this has stopped any queen c3 check as well but yeah black's helpless here the pieces just look on here so for example where well, he resigned if here we just pin the queen 
and on knight c5 then we can deliver the checkmate here this game was just so complex and rich in tactical complexity and it seems interesting that seven queen e7 might be interesting from a theoretical perspective in conjunction with what was what black played it it seems actually black has very very interesting resources at his disposal but nowadays on queen b3 queen d7 is played routinely it seems okay so interesting game even from a theoretical perspective there comments questions like shares appreciated thanks very much